Before any of my plastic boat conversions, there was this one on a Sun Dolphin Pro 120, created by a gentleman named Sebastian, someone who believed that this boat could be better than it was, and then made it epic. This video is a full overview of the entire boat, with clips of it in action and also brief history of how it was constructed. Alwan was truly the first of its kind, and quite possibly the best out there. <laughs> Sebastian is the first person that we know of personally to build a boat, a plastic boat specifically, to this magnitude. And as a result, look at all the pigs he catches. This is like pig after pig after pig, and he attributes a lot of his success to this boat. Though it's only 12 foot in length, it is, I think, close to 50 inches, maybe more at the actual bottom, bottom to bottom from the ends out. That is obscene stability. That means probably two people could be up there on the front deck looking at the graphs. At the stock version, it already had some pretty good compartments. Two on the back, one of those is a live well, three other day boxes in the front, one for terminal storage, a big wide open platform in the middle that could easily be filled in with some nice additional hatches. And compartment liners, of course, and to do that, he used plastic totes from the hardware store. I think that's a Plano-like storage box that you can get at Home Depot. So there is the big one in the core, it's going to store a lot of his tackle. The other side ones there are going to be additional day boxes. For a spread of four day box plus one front compartment box and then the major one in the middle is where you store the bulk tackle and modification of the previous back deck which will be for batteries the live well the main other storage and the extension forward is where you stick all the boat electrical stuff this frame is actually 1 16th inch thick angled aluminum inch and a half by inch and a half we actually sell kits for these specifically so you can modify small boats like this with aluminum and then based off the measurements that Sebastian pulled, he handpicked his own size of drop-in lids. And we also had powder coated black before they arrived. He templated the gaps between the hatches with cardboard and then used that exact cardboard template to cut out the aluminum sheets we sent him. And that's how he made the entire deck complete. He secured the framing to the aluminum hole with deck screws, countersink, and then a countersink bit. Then he riveted the sheet metal to the actual frame. Any part that the sheet metal touched the plastic, he also used countersink deck screws for that as well. And he could have just used any old turf decking, but he chose to go custom with the C-Deck route. He got a kit from C-Deck, and it's a bit of correspondence back and forth before you get a final layout. But once you get a final layout, they send you the kit exactly like the template, and I'll tell you, it looks phenomenal. That is the best way to do it DIY right next to taking it to a shop like one of ours, where we can actually scan the whole boat for you and send that template versus doing the Dural art or paper templates like this. But whether you go through the scan or you do it yourself, look at the results. Such an awesome way to make the boat pop and actually shine for what it really is. So let's take a deeper dive into how this whole thing functions because it has everything. Live scope, 360, dual graphs, that are very generous size. And this is how he rigged it all together. There are two separate bus bars. One runs all the electronics and the other one runs all the boat's electric stuff. Like the LEDs, nav lights, pumps, you name it. That fuse block bus bar combo then goes to the switch panel that you see right there on the left. And that's how the bulk of his boat electrical is controlled. And to the right, he has some safety equipment like uh, an emergency bilge pump just in case all the electric fails. And he has his charger back there. Got rid of the stock back hatches, dropped in these, and here they are. He also did something very clever with the plastic boat, which is he used bushings to attach all the major components to include his trolling motor and this micro anchor back here, where these, those are skateboard bushings. And in the middle compartment where his gas tank would have gone, he made a special hatch that is not one of our hatches. It's just a special hatch standalone that fits the battery box completely. And down there are his bilge pumps and his aerator pumps for his live well. He sealed them all with 3M5200 very generously. He installed the live well timer right there on the side next to the live well when it needs to be used. And obviously there are no rod lockers in this build, but this is how he stores this. He only uses two or three rods at any given time because he's always throwing big swim baits and that's why he gets the biggest fish out there. He's throwing these giant baits all the time. For the trolling motor, he got a Motor Guide Tour Pro, which has spot lock and nav lock heading and all those things. But just like how he put skateboard bushings back there to buffer the micro anchor, he did the same thing for the trolling motor, which is really smart because that trolling motor is gonna be under constant flex. And that does do things to your plastic hull over time if it's not secured correctly. As far as graphs, he's got two giant graph mounts. Those look like 12s. So we have a Gen 2 graph mount that fits dual graphs. It doesn't matter how big they are, they will fit any size graph. And then they also have cup holders, utility holders, and a puck holder. 
three spots so you can get the most out of your fish finder right at the very front where you're always at because they spend the majority of your time in the front of the boat trolling when you're bass fishing. So he doesn't have lockers, but again, he doesn't use very many rods and he has four day boxes. I think the more day boxes you have, that's actually better storage. He has a main storage down the core and that's where you like put all your stuff that just in case your plan for the day doesn't go by. But you wanna put your plan for the day in the day boxes. One is good, two is great, four is probably fantastic. Normally when somebody goes through the link to make a boat look this good, they generally have lights to accent all the aesthetics. So. All the switches there power a lot of LEDs. That one powers the nav lights. This one powers the inside here. Catch fish, not fillings, known by the swim bait king, Oliver Nye from Big Bass Dreams. That is what really inspired this boat. You know, he didn't copy him. He got his blessing and that's why it is on there. Him and Oliver actually tag each other on Instagram a lot. And there you have it. Sorry we couldn't show you a whole lot on how the boat was actually built, but what we can do is show you how it fishes.